Get ready, we're about to have some fun. Push pause, go get yourself a nice cup of coffee or your favorite beverage. We are going, these are always great. You never know what we're gonna find here. Our friend David uh, sends the most amazing things, interesting things. Remember the Loctite van? And I have no idea what's in here. I have been saving these so we could all enjoy this together because nobody on YouTube gets to do vintage tool unboxing. This, these are, <laughs> these, uh, these are really great. Okay, so let's, let's put it over here and uh, I'll put this here so you can admire it. And we'll see, what do we have? Oh, this looks, what is this? I think I know what that is. So David says that this is, obviously wood says, what is that? I have no idea what this is, maybe you do. I do know what this is, David. I think I know what it is because my grams, my grams used to have one. So I came from a family, as Mrs. W says, you came from the ultimate 4-H family. They're very crafty, they do lots of things. We grew up hunting and our cut, you know, we canned all of our own fruits and vegetables and we processed all our own elk and deer meat and, and all of those things. Uh, Cause my grandparents, they lived through the depression. Granddad, when we, uh, would uh, family would get together doing a construction project, he would go around and he would pick up all the bent nails, take them home and straighten them and put them in a can. You know, that's uh, when you live through the depression, you appreciate what you have. He's, yeah, I can imagine the waste that he, <laughs> it's a good thing he doesn't see the waste that goes, goes through with this house sometimes. So what I think this is, is, is that this is only half of it. There, Graham's had a, um, uh, an aluminum colander uh, that was this kind of this cone shaped and she would put, if I remember right, any type of a berry that had seeds in it, like raspberries, she would put that in there and go round and round and it would press the pulp out, leaving the seeds and all the things that she didn't want inside of that and she would get the juice out. I, I think, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what this little guy is. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, I hope this is a pair of fence pliers, is it? Is it? It is a good pair of fence pliers. One of the most useful tools ever invented by mankind. And I, I, I really am happy to have these good ones. It's hard to find good ones that were, you know, USA made like these guys. Um, the fence pliers, uh, it's got one end on there used for pulling fence staples out. It's got the nippers on the end uh, for pulling them out as well. It's such a purpose-built tool. And then these guys here are for cutting wire and you can cut some serious wire with these as well as a small hammer for nailing fence uh, pliers in. You can, you can do the whole job with these one set of pliers. Brian and I uh, have been doing a lot of fence work lately and we had two pair, but one of us left them out somewhere. I don't, remember, I don't know where they went and we're down to one pair and we've been sharing. So these are, these are great. I'm really happy to have a pair of those. I couldn't have asked for if I would have asked for something, that's what it would have been. Oh, man. What is this? So this looks like a... This looks like a coping saw. But no coping saw like I've ever seen. There's no adjustment in it. Apart from this cam lock system. That looks very old, isn't it? You know what a coping saw is, right? Let's see if we can get the modern day version of one. I'm assuming, I mean, what else could it be? So here's a modern day version of a coping saw. Coping saw is a saw that has a very thin blade that you use for doing radiuses or scroll work or really detailed stuff where you need to be able to turn um, a tight, tight circles. That's why, it has, that's why the blade is so thin. And it looks to me like this, but usually they have an adjustment here uh, for tensioning the blade. And I don't know, but that is very unique. Looks old, doesn't it? This cam lock deal here, this must have been how it tensioned. No, I, I'm, I'm thinking again, I, I'm thinking that it was not a coping saw. I think it was similar to that, but maybe it was a, I don't know, let me know in the comments. That's a tough one right there. Who knows what that thing is? Interesting. All right, we've got something here. Oh, I don't know where to begin here. What in the world is this? Thank you, David, for giving us all hours of, of enjoyment. Brian's been pretty happy too. I've been handing him down some of the things. This is, now this is nice. I've never seen this before, but I know exactly. Look at that. That is, you know what this is? 
I'm getting, the, I'm getting the fizz right now. This gives me the fizz, this thing right here. The, how useful would this be? So this, you can, if you look in there, you can see that it's got some teeth, right? And it's convex. So what it's made to do is it's either a rope, most likely a cable puller, where if you wanted to grab a cable like in the middle of it, let's say there was a long cable um, and you, you wanted to grab it and to pull it, um, you would put this on the cable like that, and the harder you, look at the cam action, look at that. The harder you pull, uh, the harder that it presses and the more that it bites and you can take and you can pull something um, midway. I don't know why you couldn't use that on, on a rope either. Maybe that's what it was for, was for, for pulling on a rope or for a cable. But how, that is really cool. And it's strong too. This would be... I mean, I'm just trying to think, oh, there's just a thousand applications you could use this for, especially if you were, when you're doing logging type of work um, or yarding stuff. Man, that is cool. I'll tell you what, Brian's not, you're not going to get that one, Brian. Go find your own there. <laughs> we got here. Okay, so we got another square. This one, David, this one might go to Brian here because he doesn't have one of these. He was admiring mine. Um, that you got, gave me from a previous box. That's nice. So that's just a little bench square. Very nice. Well, it's so interesting from the last one. Remember, we checked it for square, uh, and it was perfect. Probably 100 years old, and it was still, still perfect. That's a nice one. That's a good size right there. Look at that. Solid brass or bronze quality. Quality. Man, you wouldn't find that today. Not in your life. Okay, we've got a cardboard here deal. Oh, we got another pair of scissors. Oh, these are big, these are big, nice ones here. These are bigger ones. They say SS inlaid Wiss. Wiss. These are the Wiss brand. W I S S. Back when they really made this was this. These are good ones. These are more robust, heavier duty. Maybe these are shears. Um, some folks told me that I was didn't. What does that say? Forged. Looks like it's got an anvil there. Steel. Forged. Yep. Four. How about that? Nice. You just can't, you can't hardly buy scissors like this today. And they're like great shape. Nice and tight. No wiggle in them. I don't know the difference between scissors and shears. Um, I think someone mentioned, several of you mentioned that in the comments. I don't remember what it was, but this is, these are nice bench shears. Man. Good condition. No rust on them. Got that nice patina. My poor father-in-law, Vince. How you doing, Vince? I think he probably cringes, being an antique dealer, he probably cringes when I scrape all the patina off these antiques. <laughs> we, but you know what? It's meant to be used here. All right, so we've got some snow seal. Oh, Granddad, this was back before I had discovered Obanoffs, maybe back before Obanoffs existed. He was, a, he was a snow seal man. Snow seal is what we would use to, to waterproof our leather boots when we go elk hunting. And uh, Granddad, being a ex, uh, a World War II veteran, you know he was taught he take care of his feet, take care of your shoes because uh, he always used to say, "Boy, you guys, you got to dress right. You got to wear wool, and and when you go hunting, and if you get a cold shoulder, you're done." I never knew what a cold shoulder meant. I never got a cold shoulder, but maybe it's because we wore good clothing. <laughs> but we we would start uh, preparing for the. The two-week elk hunt, um, weeks in advance, he would start packing early, and one of the rituals that we would do was, was to snow seal our boots. That brings back so many, uh, so many great memories. I'll tell you a quick story. You got time for a story here? So the first year that I got to go hunting, hunting with him here in the States, for those of you that live out of country, you can start hunting with, a, with an adult if you've been through a hunter safety course when you're 12. And I was, it must have been 11. I, was, I wasn't able to hunt yet, but it was the first year I got to go with granddad hunting. Um, and my, you know, <laughs> my parents, bless them, they uh, made sure that I had warm clothing because we hunted uh, up in the Hell's Canyon area, right in the corner of the, between Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. And it's rugged country up there. It's cold. And they equipped me the best they knew uh, <laughs> with warm clothing, which turned out to be nylon ski clothing. And I think I even had moon boots. You remember those <laughs> moon boots? So my poor granddad, who was, you know, he was, he was a stalker. He was a real hunter, not a road hunter. That poor man, we didn't see 
anything, not hiding her hair that whole trip. And I think now when I look back on it, it was probably because I was walking behind him wearing nylon pants and moon boots. <laughs> I sounded like a one-man band, you know. You know how you know you think corduroy pants are noisy, you know, boom, boom, when the legs go by. Well, I had that nylon on, and I made so much racket that there wasn't anything that was going to be near us, you know. And my poor granddad, he didn't say a thing, bless him. He had the patience of Job. And, but the next year, uh, he took personal responsibility of uh, equipping me with the proper clothing, which turned out to be wool. <laughs> <laughs> but Snow Seal, but thanks for that memory. Snow Seal was, uh, was a part of that. Well, how about that? We got the Loctite theme in there. So, <laughs> so those of you who are completely confused why the Loctite keeps showing up, no, they're not a sponsor. Um, if you want to know, uh, you need to go back to the last snarky or uh, Wrangler Star Reads mean comments video that we did last month um, and all will be clear. But we've got an ammo here, an ammo, ammo case. Let's see what's inside. Man, oh man. Oh, it's full of treasures. It's full of treasures. All right, I want to spoil it for you here. Okay, so we've got a pair of uh, we've got a pair of specs here, spring-loaded reading glasses plus 250. Let's see. I think that's my prescription there. Oh, it's perfect. How did you know? You could never have too many specs around. Reading glasses to go with your new suit. New suit. Did I get a new suit? I don't remember. These are nice. Green too. Mrs. W will like that, being half Irish. All right, we'll put those there. Put the specs there. We'll be using those for woodworking in the future. <clears throat> we got a brush. I don't know what this for. It, I, I, when I first saw it, I was thinking it was a shaving brush, but it's too big. I don't know what that is. Sure is a nice brush though. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe you can help me with that. What in the world is this? David, you bring me no end of pleasure. I think I think everyone else enjoys these too. I think it's fun to see all these. I better put my specs back in their case there, they'll get all scratched up. Gotta look after things. Alright, what in the world is I think I know what this is. No, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Obviously, obviously this slides. It, I don't think that are these. I, don't, I think these are two separate things. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, of course. It, I didn't see that. This is a um, a depth marker. You see, there's a little. Uh, this is a nice one too. The one I have is really. What's that for? What's that for? I don't know what that is for. So it's got a crown on it. That usually means Scandinavian. It's made out of what I would say, I would guess that that, that looks like, um, looks like ash, which would be, that would be a common wood used in Scandinavia. This is a nice, big, robust one. So what it is, is if you wanna, if you're doing layout woodworking, is that brass? Is it plastic? No, that's a nice screw. If you're doing layout and you want to transfer some marks like that, that's got that little scratcher on there. You can take it along here, set the fence at a particular depth and make a line like that. It saves a ton of time on layout. This is a good one. That was obviously some sort of a, maybe it was a pivot or something. That's probably what it was. Maybe you put a little point in there, you could anchor it and you could pivot it like a compass if I had to guess. That's nice. Uh, that's that's a keeper. That's a, we'll stay on the bench there. Here we have something. Ah, uh, this is for measuring. For measuring. So it's got a plunger on it, right? Right there. It's got a fence. It's got um, a non. It's got a standard non-metric. It's for measuring. Oh, it's for measuring the depth of something. It, it's got to be general. I don't know. I mean, I understand the concept of what it's intent. I just don't know the exact application of that. But that's a nice one, isn't it? General. It's sad to see, you know, general, like you, if you go to, it's either home, I think it's Home Depot that they still carry the general brand. And you know, of course, you know, that was general was the byword of quality back in the day. And these brands, these old brands, like uh, even Irwin and Stanley have been bought by well, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know all the details, but to have been bought by companies, many of them, and then um, they've 
went forward on the, the trusted name, on the inertia of, of the once the tool that well, was once the paramount of quality, and then they, of course, stripped all the guts out of it by uh, making cheap, inferior things and going forward on the name, um, which is kind of sad. But this is back when it was made really well. Don't know what that is. Okay, we've got a Ziploc bag here. It's always nice to get an ammo case. There's only, a, you can't have too many of those. Wow, now that is interesting. This is, I have never seen this before. This is obviously a Yankee screwdriver of some sort, yep. Uh, but it's all metal. It's actually of a size that's somewhat usable. The mystery here is what is, so it's a, so you press on it and it turns screws. Usually they have a dial right there for reversing the forward and reverse. It looks like it's, how do I do that? Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is really, oh, they're all, all the bits are in there. It's got a little, uh, looks like fish gills in there. A little divider. That's cool, isn't it? Man, that's cool. How did I even open that thing? So you loosen this deal right here, and that and that opens up for bit storage. A little thing that says you oil it right there, a little oiler hole. All metal. Now I have been critical of Yankee screwdrivers in the past because I've found them to be kind of ungainly uh, because of the size there. Some of them are so long. And granted, I, I do understand it's probably my lack of understanding and knowing how to use them. And I uh, also these these are little drill bits. Um, several guys told me that they were, there was some advantage to them. Maybe they didn't wander as much or something, but there's, they're all in there. Little, this is actually, I'd actually use this for pre-drilling little holes. Look how nicely it fits in there. Isn't that neat? It's like loading a revolver with all those little, little bits. That is really cool. That is really cool. <laughs> and then it stores back up in here. Turn that, turn that nut locks it into place. <laughs> Neat. I can't figure out how to change. How do you change directions on it? Is it just drill forward? I guess if it's a drill bit, you don't need to change directions. You're only going really going forward. That's a cool one. Boy, what good condition too. Nice and all metal. That's a fun one, isn't it? Man, we're just getting warmed up here. What do we got here? So these are wood turn, little tiny wood tur turning chisels. Though this is appreciated because I have recently got a wood lathe. I'm kind of learning, teaching myself how to do that. And this, I don't have anything that can do um, such nice little detail work like this. Look how small those guys are. That's really cool. It's got the original price tag on it, $10.49 Dremel. I'll bet these are American made too. Is Dremel an American company? Huh. Division of Emerson. I don't know. Actually, I'll use those. Those are, those are pretty nice. I've been eyeing this little case right here. This looks very interesting. Kenwood. So, looks like we got a stereo face. What in the world have we got here? Oh, we've just got we've got some uh, we've got some uh, small drill bits. What folks told me what these were called, these little guys. Um, they had a kind of a charming little name, but this is, fits in a brace bit for small holes. What do they call those things? Those little uh, deals with screw, little drills with the wood handles on them. You guys remember what that was? Niblets or, no, I don't remember what it was. We got some small, more, oh, there's a, that's a, what is that? It looks like a nail, but it has some writing on it. We're, here, we're, we're gonna have to get our specs out. So David knew I wasn't going to be able to read any of this. So we got our specs here. We can see Southwest Card, Mansfield, Massachusetts. Man, you got me on that one. It's got a, it's got an angle. You see that an angle on there? It looks like I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Two more of these little tiny little half round files. New condition. Well, I'm enjoying these glasses right here. Of course, made in USA. Those are nice, aren't they? There's more in there. This is better than what originally came in here. The old Kenwood. Oh, 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 oh. It's a... 
it's a it's a plumb bob. I have I have kind of a fascination for can't get in it. Fascination for plumb bobs. I just think that they're so interesting, and then all the biblical references of them, and God uses the plumb bob as a rule of standard. And you think about the old children of Israel building Solomon's temple using the plumb bob, and and still relevant today. Dunlop. Dunlop. This looks like it's probably a maybe a mason's plumb bob. Um, I don't have any. I don't have any. It's got the nickel on there. Nothing prettier than nickel plating. Nickel plating looks better than chrome. It's coming off there a little bit, but I, I would imagine, and I don't know this to be true, but a, pl a but a plumb bob uh, that was made out of steel was probably, I would imagine, for a mason. Maybe someone because the masonry is they work in pretty rough environment with rock and stone and gravel and mortar. Maybe they needed a, a, a more durable one uh, versus some of the carpenters that would use brass, which are really a treasure. Get a brass. I'll show you sometime. I've got a beautiful brass plumb bob I've restored. That's that's nice. I like. I could. I, I kind of. Oh, oops, I lost my file there. I like. I like plumb bobs. What's this? That's just a little. Just a small knife. Maybe that was, looks like the edge is, the tip is broken off. This was probably a carpenter's, maybe a carpenter's marking knife. I'm, I'm just guessing. Don't know for sure. You can see that. That's, a, that's pretty cool. We got, uh, what is this, a screwdriver? No, it's some, I, I'm always bad with these. I never know what these specialty screwdriver deals are. Some folks uh, told me, it's, what in the world is that? So it's got, it's got two tips on there. It looks like it's, it's maybe for holding something. And then they scissor together. They scissor together when, this, when you push this plastic piece on there. Look at that. See? What in the world would that be for? Man, I have no idea. It says Quick Wedge, Salt Lake City, Quick Wedge. I don't know. I don't know. If you know, let us know. We that's that's a mystery to me. I'll bet this is an ice pick. Look at that. Upholstery fabric, John K. Burke Company, 55 years of service. So I, I think that these old ice picks, I think this was kind of a common thing that was given away by businesses. It was like a calling card or maybe a business card. I know my granddad, when I was going through his things, he had several um, similar things like this that were ice picks that people had, had been kind of promotional items like that. But, uh, I, I keep an ice pick in all my shops, um, or an awl, or whatever you want to call it, for poking holes or digging stuff out. That's, that's an essential tool. You have, to have a, you have to have one. So we've got some wood handled. This looks like a, this is a knife of some sort. Same here, similar, but just short. It's got an angle cut on it. It's like a handmade handle. What's that going on here? Micro shield. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I had a, <clears throat> as a EMT, uh, I carry a, um, uh, a, a full medical kit in my, my cars. And I was in Portland one time, and right in front of me, there was a homeless guy who was crossing the Burnside Bridge. There's a homeless guy uh, that ran out, tried to cross the street, and got hit, hit by a car right in front of me. And I, and I stopped, um, and, and he was bleeding, and he was breathing, and everything was fine. Uh, but uh, I, I was he's thinking as I was getting out, you know, or when you smelled, smelled the guy, you know, he was so dirty. Like, boy, if I had to do mouth-to-mouth, uh, -mouth, <laughs> you'd, you'd think twice about that, right? You have to look after yourself before you can help someone else and what type of diseases they have. This is a, a barrier. Um, that can be used. So if you have someone uh, that you don't want to, uh, maybe a non-family member you don't want to uh, come in contact with, but you know the mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, that's kind of um, gone by the wayside and and things are changing now. But uh, yeah, that's really it was really common when I went to EMT school that uh, uh, you know everybody would carry these little guys around and have these barriers, blood-borne pathogen barriers. Uh, uh, strapped to your keychain and stuff, but uh, not a bad thing to have. That's it, friends. The box is empty. And 
we'll end on this note. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know. Click the thumbs up if you enjoy these videos. I appreciate you coming and hanging out with me. This is a long video, probably what a half hour, if I'm guessing. 25 minutes. Um, but we have one more to go. So thanks again, David. Um, it brings a little joy to all of us so that we can uh, look at these old tools and try to figure out what they are and uh, always enjoy it. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.